yes guys so so many adjustments are happening let's try to have a holistic view of how do we approach the problems on consolidation whenever a problem emerges on consolidation there are certain steps that we need to follow what are the steps that we need to follow as far as consolidation is concerned let's see the steps one by one right now the first step that we need to apply here is to start with the date of acquisition first always start with date of acquisition guys date of acquisition is generally given in the question so you don't have to apply your head in trying to determine what is the date of acquisition clear number two i'll try to give out what is my shareholding pattern how I write a shareholding pattern? I'll write it like this. Whenever I have the concept of shareholding pattern, I will try to present it in this manner. Number of shares. And percentage holding. as well as my NCI okay so if I take up the number of shares and this will be the total shares it should be equal to total shares and subsidy if I take the then the total should be coming out of quantity. Generally, even this part is presented as far as your question is concerned itself. You don't have to apply great logics or sense in apply in understanding this concept as well. Then we will move into the step three. Under step three, we will try to analyze the reserves of subsidiary. Analyze the reserves of subsidiary S Limited with respect to date of acquisition. Guys, if you can identify this step directly from the question, you can skip this step. But fundamentally, what we try to do is we will always start with balance as on balance sheet date. Balance of reserve in limited on balance sheet. This balance is existing on balance sheet date. I will try to identify what was the balance of reserve on the date of acquisition itself. So I will divide it into two parts. First reserve on date of acquisition and what is the appropriation after acquisition how much reserve increased after acquisition so reserve existing on the date of acquisition and reserve appropriated after the date of acquisition now to the extent of reserve existing on the date of acquisition, it is called as pre-acquisition reserve. That is a reserve already existing on the date of acquisition. So I'll call it as pre-acquisition reserve. This part of reserve which has been appropriated after the date of acquisition is called as post-acquisition reserves. Clear? Now that is my step 3. So for each reserve in subsidiary, I will have to identify what is the amount of pre-acquisition reserve and what is the amount of post-acquisition reserve. For every reserve in subsidiary, I will have to do this function. Clear? That is my step 3. Once I have identified all the pre-acquisition and post-acquisition reserves, then I will get into the concept of distribution of reserves. By distribution of reserves, 
when I do distribution of result, I distribute the results which I have analyzed in study to holding and minority in the ratio of their shareholding pattern. So whatever we have observed as and post acquisition result. And I will try to allocate this amounts of holding and minority or the percentage of holding which you have entertained in your step two. So I will try to understand what is holding combination pre acquisition reserve. Similarly to even the post acquisition reserve as well. Clear? Then I will push myself into step 5 where I will write what is non controlling interest. How do I calculate controlling interest? Non controlling interest number. Share in share capital plus NCI share in reserves. It is NCI share in share capital plus NCI share in reserves. So write down NCI share in part A share capital plus NCI share in reserves of the subsidiary. Guys, like you already know. We have divided the reserves into pre acquisition and post acquisition. So, reserves also divided further into pre acquisition and post acquisition. This total will be considered as my NCA to be presented in the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, this is my NCI total. Where do I pick up this NCI share in pre acquisition and post acquisition reserve? We have already distributed the reserve. So therefore, NCI share in pre-acquisition and post-acquisition reserve can be picked up from this. Clear? So it can be picked up from your distribution of reserves where you fill up these two items of NCI share in pre-acquisition reserve plus NCI share in post-acquisition reserves and this will bring me to the end of NCI in consolidated balance sheet. This is the end of step 5. Then I get into my step 6. My step 6 is about determination of cost of control. We have already discussed determination of cost of control. But I will go into step 7 where I will try to determine what is the reserve. Consolidated balance sheet. I will add two figures reserves and surplus in holding company on balance sheet. Added by plus RB. Share in subsidiary post acquisition First of all, what is the value of uh, your post acquisition reserve? How do I determine your post acquisition reserves? We have already done it in your distribution of reserves. Where you have the post acquisition reserves and you know what is a holding company share. Such share of holding company, I am adding it to your reserves of the holding company to identify what is the reserve of consolidated balance sheet. And then I will finally prepare step 8. Clear guys? 
this is exactly my preparation model or my way on which i will present the balance sheet as far as your consolidation is concerned so total we have seen eight steps first cost of acquisition two shareholding pattern three analyze the reserves of the subsidiary with respect to date of acquisition to determine what is pre acquisition reserve and what is post acquisition reserve number four we distributed the pre acquisition reserve and post acquisition reserves among holding and minority interest in the percentage of holding that they already have five i measured my minority interest or non controlling interest six cost of control seven reserves for cbs eight consolidated balance eight steps done with consolidation and dusted with consolidation clear So let's look at the steps in consolidation that I've written already. Date of acquisition, shareholding pattern, analyze the reserves of the subsidiary with respect to date of acquisition to determine what is pre-acquisition and post-acquisition reserves. And then I distrib and then I distributed my reserves in step four. I determined my cost of control and my NCI in step five and step six. Step seven, I went into reserves for consolidated balance sheet, and finally, step eight my consolidated balance sheet. that will bring us to the end of the steps involved in consolidation but let's look at the next adjustment revaluation of assets and liabilities in subsidiary on date of acquisition this generally happens because as on the date of acquisition you sometimes have a tendency to measure the assets and liabilities in the subsidiary at fair value when you measure the assets and liabilities in subsidiary at fair value you normally have some revaluation of a few assets upward or downward whenever there is an upward or a downward revaluation as far as the subsidiary is concerned it gives rise to something called as revaluation surplus such a revaluation surplus or revaluation deficit which arises upon revaluation of assets and liabilities on the date of acquisition in subsidiary the entire revaluation should be considered as pre-acquisition reserve but don't forget that whenever there is a revaluation to the asset there is a consequential effect even on the depreciation as well so to the extent of depreciation on the revaluation part if it is an upward revaluation of an asset excess depreciation if it is a downward revaluation of asset then the depreciation will be reduced if there is an excess depreciation the profit should reduce you know, and if you are downward revaluing then the profit should increase such adjustment should be made from post acquisition profit why is that so because you are revaluing on the date of acquisition so your the depreciation and revaluation impact is after the date of acquisition so after the date of acquisition period is called as post acquisition period so during this post acquisition period such depreciation and revaluation should be adjusted from the profits clear so this is my adjustment related to revaluation of assets in the subsidiary on the date of acquisition what about bonus issue what if the subsidiary announces bonus whenever the subsidiary issues bonus it will not affect the shareholding pattern because every shareholder will get the bonus if holding and minority are holding shares in the ratio of 60 40 even bonus issue is also in the same ratio of 60 40 so therefore the shareholding pattern will not change because of bonus now will this bonus is issued out of reserve which reserve subsidiary's reserve now out of subsidiary's reserve i have two classifications pre acquisition and post acquisition which reserve should i consider first always consider pre acquisition reserve whenever i have an adjustment of bonus always consider that it is an adjustment from pre acquisition reserve only unless and until pre acquisition reserve is insufficient if pre acquisition reserve is insufficient then you can adjust it against post acquisition reserve 
your goodwill determined in step six and your NCI determined in step five will not change because ultimately a reserve is becoming share capital. So when you calculate either goodwill, goodwill is only calculated at the point of acquisition. So that anyways won't change. But look at minority, reserve reduced, share capital increased. How do you calculate minority? Share capital plus reserve. Ultimately, the decrease in share uh, reserve is compensated with the increase in share capital. So there is no consequence of bonus either in computation of NCI or in computation of goodwill. Clear? These are the two general adjustments which will appear apart from the adjustments regarding uh, multiple dates of acquisition or we have also seen adjustments regarding your intercompany transaction. Apart from these, this is the only adjustment which should appear as far as your consolidation is concerned. So therefore, we can start solving problems as far as consolidation is concerned. Now, it does not mean we ended with consolidation because there are also situations that we have seen which, which we should see regarding disposal of subsidiary and also your associates and joint ventures. What is the equity method of consolidation? So these two aspects are yet to be seen. But as of now, we are sufficient enough and educated to start looking at some problems on consolidation.